So welcome to this new video of my YouTube series getting started with Eclipse Micro Profile 3.0. In this video I'm gonna cover the first um, Java EE specification from Eclipse Micro Profile which is JSONB. So with JSONB we get binding from Java objects to JSON data structure and the other way around. I've prepared a simple example to show you all possible capabilities of JSONB and as in my previous videos I'm deploying it to a local open liberty with watch and deploy to deploy every new change. So let's have a look at the most simplest usage of JSONB where we just um, serialize and deserialize from Java objects to JSON strings and from JSON strings to Java objects. So here I've created a, a book entity and to now deserialize it to a JSON string we have to create a JSONB instance. We can do this with this JSONB builder and the create method. Once we have this instance we can use the toJSON method and pass in our Java object. So here I'm doing this with our book and then let's print out the result and see what happens. So here you see now our JSON string with the values we provided in our Java class. You might already wonder um, the price is a little bit different. Also the author is missing which was Duke here and we have a German layout for this creation date. Let's have a look at the, the book class where we can use a bunch of JSONB annotations to further modify our JSON. So here you see the for example the JSONB date format here we can specify the format how we want to print our date. We can also use JSONB transient to not display or to not include a specific value to our JSON result and also JSONB number format to format the number. So here I'm saying we just want two digits after the point and with this we can further modify the result. Next let's see if we can serialize it again to a Java class. So I'm using the JSON string here and I'm now using the from JSON method of our JSONB instance and I'm also passing along the, the class to which I wanted to to serialize. So let's save this and let's wait for the output. So yes, now you can see here our two string returned again a book but here now we have the downside of not specifying for example the, the author in our JSON string so it's not specified here and we will serialize it again to a Java class so the author is null as there is no value and also for the price we don't get the same price that it was originally but this was was intended to but you have to you shouldn't forget it that if you modify it and re-serialize it to a java class it looks a little bit different so next let's have a look um, how we can map collections so with json b we can also map a json array um, to it back again to a Java class or we can map a collection of objects to a JSON array. So here I'm creating a simple list of two books. Again I'm creating a JSONB instance and here I'm creating my JSON string. Let's see for, for the output if this works. So here you now see an array of two JSON objects and again as we use some JSONB annotations in our Java class the author is missing. We configured how the creation date should look like and also the price. And to now serialize it, so to serialize the JSON string again back to a list of Java books, we can use here the JSONB from JSON again, but for the result 
class type, we have to use this new array list, pass in the, the class we want to have, then get class and then get generic super class to, to make it work. So let's see. And if you see here in the output, it's printing out again two books with their two string method, like we saw it when we just mapped two, uh, where we just mapped one instance. So mapping a collection is, is also working with JSONB. Let's comment this. So with JSONB, we can also customize our mapping and define a, a own logic for mapping from JSON and to JSON. And for this, we can make use of the so-called adapters. So JSONB um, comes with the concept of adapters where we can, which we can implement and specify how specific entities should be serialized and deserialized. To create a JSONB instance with a dedicated adapter, I'm using here this JSONB config where I'm passing the adapters I'm going to use which I will show you later on. And then I will say create my JSONB instance using this config and then I can reuse the JSONB instance like we already know from mapping collections or a simple object. Let's have a look at the adapter. So here our book adapter implements this JSONB adapter interface and we are passing the instance we want to see, the Java class we want to serialize to so if we implement this, we have to implement or override two methods. The one is adapt to JSON and the other one is adapt from JSON. So adapt to JSON, we're going to return a JSON object. And here we can now add custom logic how our JSON should be structured. So here, for example, I have a custom logic where I say the title is a combination of the actual book title and the author. And also I'm saying here, for example, which is a really bad example, but I'm doubling the price here. So I'm multiplying the price and the rest stays the same. Also, some are not included in the JSON, like we saw with JSONB transient, we can do it manually here. But if we do this, then we have to also write the other side where we want to create our book entities from JSON strings. And then we have to here again, split it out as I'm using this delimiter for the title. So we have to extract the actual title and the author again from this JSON string and could also reduce the price by two to get the original price. I'm not doing this here, but as you can see, you can now add further logic here to serialize a Java class from a JSON object manually. So let's see this in action. Let's comment, uncomment this. Yes, and you now see here our title is a combination of the actual book title and the author. Our creation date, I also put, if I done here, yes, I am using the epoch day, so also a different representation format of this. Pages stay the same and here for the price, you see I've multiplied it with two and didn't specify anything, how many delimiter, uh, how many digits we want to use. So it's the raw value here. And we can now try to serialize this JSON string again, back to our book class. Let's see if this works. So yes, here we are now using the values and also re-extracting the title and the author from this concatenated title author field. So this is working. With JSONB, there's also way more. Let me first comment this so we have a clean console. There's also way more to configure so this JSONB config has a lot of methods which we can use. So for example, we can also say we want formatting. We can specify the, the order strategy. So in which order the values are present in our JSON. We can define the naming strategy. So override the default one. We can also specify here the date format. 
And some of these configuration values can be done with this JSONB properties like we saw it. Some of them can't be done with JSONB annotations like the order strategy. So for this, we would have to use a, a custom JSONB config like I'm doing it here. To create a JSONB instance with this config, it's as simple as before. So just have to pass this config instance to the create method and then can use the JSONB with the configured values. So let's use this one and let's see it in action. So now you can see here we have a formatted JSON object with the values and also no null values are present here. The author is null, so there is no author here in the result. And we also have a, the ordering is different and also the, the naming strategy. So back then we had the camel case, now we have a case with underscore here, like you see it in the creation date. So all of this can be configured if you need it. That's all I wanted to share with you for JSONB. Have fun using it. Oh,